Okay, so I want to talk about something and actually consider this hopefully the end of the trilogy of videos that I've done talking about Viz Media and their price increase in manga. And I hear you. You're like, hey, we, we know. We know this is happening. It's going from 999 to 1199. We've known for a while. Understand. Also, it's the holiday season. Shouldn't this be? You know, this is why I really started thinking about it. Well, there's actually a couple of reasons that I started thinking about it. One is Crunchyroll Store. Uh, they bought Right Stuff and they're kind of doing their holiday sale. And you start noticing because if, if you've been around for at least the last few years, Right Stuff kind of always put a staple of manga in bundle prices. Usually for the last few years, there's the Satoshi Khan bundle. You know what I mean? There's the Fire Force bundle. It's many of the same bundles for the last few years is what I'm getting at. And I noticed they seem a little bit more expensive. And I kind of didn't put it together at first, but then it started to kind of dawn on me of like, why am I kind of not interested in taking a leap on a manga bundle? Again, if you followed this channel at all, you know, I pot commit, I, I pot commit to us some things. All right, listen, all right, I sometimes, you know, happy holidays to myself. Here's a bundle of manga that I know really nothing about, but I'm gonna pot commit and it, maybe it'll be good, maybe it'll be terrible, who knows? <laughs> That's the fun of the holiday season. <laughs> Obviously, my collection has grown magnanimously uh, in the last few years, but I still really didn't jump on a series. There was nothing that kind of pushed me like, oh, it's such a good deal. Let me try it. And maybe that's uh, maybe I'm growing up, you know, and learning to say no. Probably not, though. Probably listen. Probably not. Trust me, I got a manga haul coming and you're going to be like, but he did not. He did not learn how to say no. But I think it has to do with the increase in price, which kind of gets me to my first point that I want to talk about that I kind of hit on a little bit in the other videos, but I don't think I did good enough at it. So I kind of want a, a redo. I think this increase in price can absolutely and probably already has hurt newer series. Because again, you have series that kind of already have following. You're kind of pot committed to that. You're going to continue collecting it. Listen, I have 104 volumes of One Piece. At this point, I'm going all the way to the end. Even if I fell off of this series, I'm committed. I'm going all the way to the end. You know, a lot of Viz series, I feel that way about. But those series that have already hit that threshold and you've already started collecting it, you're going to purchase them. And maybe you won't even purchase them as fast because $2 here, $3 there can really build up. But think about the new series coming through. And I think a lot of us, at least me and, and people that I kind of talk to, Shonen Jump, which, you know, Viz publishes Shonen Jump titles, you probably know that. But I think we're getting to the point that some of the bigger series are, are kind of starting their final arcs, they're starting to wrap up and things like that. And what is the new? And, and again, I've done videos on this, and I'm sure if you've been on the internet at all, you kind of, you know, the kakarabachi of it all, you know? Because I think people are looking for what's that next big Shonen Jump series? What's that next series that is going to take the place of one of these series that is a phenomenon. And I think charging more is going to hurt those impulse buys. And I mean, I don't have the statistics to back it up, but I would imagine that some of these series that are massively popular now and going into their 30th volume, they were probably helped by an impulse buy. But, and especially in this economy, couldn't, couldn't be me. But maybe we could justify $10. It's harder to justify 13, 15, 20, 25. The new volumes of JoJo are 25. Like whether again, that series, you're probably already pot committed at that point, or you've just decided not for me and you've moved on, but is going to be a choice that someone new that's getting into manga collecting has to make. And I think that's tough, man. That's tough for new series instead of hopping in to a, a series that has been talked about and revered so much on YouTube or on the internet or in the anime or, or a already known quantity, someone's going to commit to that series because they're like, well, a hundred thousand people can't be wrong. Listen, actually, there's some series that a hundred thousand people really like that, you know, they might be wrong about. I'm, I'm not gonna say which is which. Yeah, you know, it's not this video but there's probably some. So as a new collector, make that choice. I don't know. And and I think that those new series coming out, they're really going to have to catch fire. Is the phrase, I think that's a phrase. That's probably a phrase, right? To justify that purchase and to justify being successful. And here's the thing. How, how do they 
measure success now. At least here in America, people are buying a little less manga. You know, that boom that it, that happened a few years ago is kind of leveling out, which is a good thing. Because I actually think, and then I'll get to that, oh, I'll get to it right now. This is my video, I can do what I want. But I think secondhand manga bookstores are actually going to see a jump in sales. And I think this is a, a great time if you're lucky enough, a lot of people don't, but if you're lucky enough to have a secondhand bookstore near you that sells manga or takes manga in, I bet you can find some really good deals now. And I think that's only going to grow. But again, that's series we've already talked about and we already read and it, I don't know, it, it's, I feel really, really horrible uh, for the new series coming out. And the second thing I want to talk about is the price. I finally saw it like in real, look, I had, I, this is what happened. I bought, I, don't look at this cover if you're not caught up with One Piece, I'm not going to spoil it, but I will say this. It was kind of weird seeing that volume say eleven ninety nine, and that kind of gets to my second point of they expect you to pay two, three, five, ten extra dollars. But this quality has not changed. And while you could say like, yeah, inflation, you know, you go into the whole thing that's going kind of here in America. This got me really thinking. I went on the internet. I went to Amazon, okay? And then, and then I picked the One Piece Volume 105, right? I just wanted a blanket like a, a baseline kind of went to different Amazon places around the world and kind of converted it to USD and, and to see the difference in price. And while some were very similar and some were actually cheaper, $16? Oof. Ugh. That hurt. For this? Tough. That's, mm. And then you go to Japan and it's like four bucks. Four bucks, it is what it is. And yes, they're smaller and, and this and that. But the thing about it is they really haven't pivoted. Thus, their quality doesn't need to pivot with it. But if you're going to go up. And again, manga is not really the most expensive hobby you can have. Even if it's $10, right? You get a custom to this quality for $10 and it's kind of become accepted. And while I do think that $12 is going to become accepted, because do we really have a choice? It still makes you wonder if you're expecting us to pay three extra dollars. I would, I would at least like some, like a, a color page, perhaps, uh, something, three extra bucks, a third of the price extra. If you think about it, ten bucks, third of that's like what is that? Three. Uh, okay, math, do it, figure it out. Three point three three to the nth degree. You know what I mean? So if you're gonna charge an extra third. Where's the extra third in quality? That's, I started thinking about that hard. And they're they're putting out the same style of paper, the same covers, the same everything. But they're just asking for a third more. Which brings me to like my third point and kind of what I really wanted to articulate in those other videos. All this stuff I wanted to articulate, right? Because I just don't think it was kind of new and fresh and now I've had a lot of time to sit with it. Financial stuff, money is always important. It's always a big thing. And how you want to choose to spend your money for your enjoyment when you're not at work or, or having responsibilities of, of a family or whatever it may be, that's kind of your time and your money and then you want to choose how to spend it. So if you see this increase and you start thinking to yourself, I really enjoyed it. And yes, it cost me a little bit, but now again, two to three extra dollars instead of a hundred dollars, I'm spending 130. If you don't know, that's more, uh, substantially more. And so when you do go through those burnouts, which I think we all kind of go through as mod collectors or any type of collectors or any type of hobby ever, you go through burnout. But with that added extra, more money, this, that, it's kind of easier to be like, ah, I'll get back to it maybe. And I think this is one of the first times since I've been involved again, haven't haven't been here since the beginning of manga. Be cool if I was, but I haven't. I think it's the first time we're seeing the business side of manga, if that makes sense. The last three or four years that I've been in this hobby, that business seemed to kind of be front and center. The business of right stuff and Crunchyroll. The business of inflation and price increase. The business of quality control. The business of licensing. It's becoming more open and more honest, which is, I think, a good thing. But in turn, I think it's easier now more than ever 
for it not to feel like a cool, interesting hobby that maybe you share with your online or in real life friends. I think while a lot of good things come with the growth and popularity of manga, and I hope it continues to grow because we get cooler stuff. They, they, companies are more willing to take risk and maybe we get licenses of series that we never thought possible. But sometimes I feel like the growth of manga and the growth of the fandom or whatever you want to call it, it can start to lose maybe its art form and become more of a corporation. <laughs> that got dark. I'm sorry. And I'm not talking about the manga authors or, you know, anyone that works on manga. They are still very creative people. I'm just talking about the publishers, which I get it. Their job is to push this thing, make money for the company so they can pay the author. And, you know, I understand how that works. But I, I, whew, I got whew, really dark. Uh, I apologize. But listen, I can say all this and you can go look at my manga collection videos and be like, yeah, okay. We hear you. You're still going to spend a lot of your money on more manga every year. Grow bigger. You're right. 100%. I Listen, you're 100% right. And I still love this hobby. And I, I love this art form. And I love just enjoying this work. But it's just something that I've been thinking about. And so I wanted to ramble into this camera. I do apologize. It's not like my normal videos, right? I usually like jump around, have different camera angles, but I don't know, just something that's been on my mind. Hopefully I didn't uh, depress you too much. I apologize if I did, but I hope that if you're having a bad day, it gets better. If you're having a good day, it becomes fantastic. I'll see you next time.